Hello there, I'm Olena and in this video we are going to talk about the ideas from a recently published paper on generative agents that can act autonomously and evolve over time and how these ideas can change the way we create interactive virtual societies that mimic real human behavior. You know, those awesome games like Sims, Stardew Valley, they are super fun, but let's be honest, the characters in those games can be a bit uh, meh, at least to say. They stick to their scripted routines, don't improvise or self-reflect and tend to be overly self-focused. But then there is also Westworld, the TV show where the characters gain self-awareness, start thinking independently and eventually question the nature of consciousness and morality. We are not quite there yet, I hope, in real life, but how close are we are to develop that type of intelligence? And to answer that, let's dive into this paper. Where is it? Into this paper by the researchers from Stanford and Google. It's actually a pretty enjoyable read, but if you are short on time, I'll give you key takeaways. You can find the link to the paper in the description below if you are interested in geeking out further. So let's get into it. So this group of researchers had an ambitious goal to create an artificial society where each member exhibits believable human behavior. They wanted to see how realistic these characters could be. Now, granted, uh, their society was built in a sandbox, uh, which they called a small wheel. Uh, no, there is no superhuman there. Uh, it's like a mini village with 25 villagers or agents, as the researchers refer to them. Um, these agents are designed to behave like humans. They make memories, they plan, improvise, reflect, get new ideas and even influence each other. Uh, they are capable of self-organization and can be punctual to an event if they promise to be there, which is actually more reliable than some humans, I know. Uh, the researchers built a cognitive model for those agents and connected that model to the language model of ChatGPT. I think this is the coolest application of ChatGPT that I've seen. This village, Smallville, has different areas where villagers live. There is a co-living space where Giorgio Rossi, Carlos Gomez, Isabella Rodriguez and others reside. Some other villagers, for example Sam and Jennifer Moore, have their own separate house. Students from a local college live in college dorms, uh, such as Maria Lopez, who actually has a secret crush on her classmate Klaus Müller. Spoiler alert, she later invites Klaus to a party. Smallville also has its own cafe run by Isabella Rodriguez, a bar for some evening fun, a park for leisurely strolls, and even a supply chain and a grocery store for everyday needs. It's like a little virtual village with its own unique characters and places to explore. A perfect small playground for the researchers to build and validate their ideas. And in a nutshell, the paper focuses on the generative agents and how they are built. These agents are designed to have advanced abilities such as memory retention and retrieval, reflections, ability to interact with other agents within that sandbox, they are capable of making plans and also improvise, and they do it quite frequently. The paper also shares insights on how they evaluated believability of these agents, and then the researchers discuss the ethical and other risks associated with generative agents' use. In the majority of gameplays and other scenarios today, we still see very unconvincing behavior of characters, uh, if those try to mimic a human. Recently we got large language models, 
and it was a huge game changer. These cutting-edge text generation algorithms have been trained on tons of data that represents human behavior, so they can generate some seriously realistic patterns if we give them the right prompts. However, according to this paper, the approaches which have been used till now, even when relying on the language models, are still very limited. Because of all of this, this paper is proposing a new agent architecture that includes a more complex memory and reflection stream that is updated based on agent experiences and interactions with other agents. All the spaces in the village, including living areas as well as bars, cafes, etc., are functional. They are complete with objects like beds, desks, closets, and kitchens. Agents can move around, interact with objects, and even influence the state of the environment, such as making bed occupied when they go to sleep, or changing the status of a kitchen stove when making a breakfast. The person who is running the simulation, the real human, can actually communicate with the agents. Those real humans can pretend to be another persona in the village and ask some questions, or also put a seed into the memory of the villager uh, by being that inner voice that gives you a certain idea or a wish. Agents communicate with each other in full natural language, making the whole experience looking like a virtual reality from outside. These agents make their own plans and continue with their days, but during the day, when they pass by each other, they can decide to stop and start a conversation. And that's actually where the whole magic is happening. But how do agents think? Let's start with their memory. Their memory is actually a database that stores a detailed record of every experience the agent had. And since all the data is stored in natural language, we can also read what is there quite easily. Uh, here is an example of what Isabella Rodriguez had on her mind during the day. Now that we have all the memories, Whenever we need to make a decision what to do next or what Isabella has to do next, we can retrieve the memories, put them into ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to guide the behavior of Isabella. Okay, not so fast. Uh, there is actually a catch. All the agent's memories are so huge that they can't really all fit into ChatGPT's context window. Yep, imagine, ChatGPT has its own attention span. Anyway, for this challenge, the scientists came up with a solution. First, they split the memory stream into memory objects, and now they can granularly filter the stream and retrieve the most relevant memories. Each memory object has a natural language description a creation timestamp and a most recent access timestamp. To decide what is relevant and what should have priority when guiding behavior, the researchers used three components – recency, importance and relevance. We score, or the researchers, scored all memories of a villager by those criteria then took the top scored ones, give to ChatGPT and ask it politely to guide the next behavior. You can imagine that the ability to have memories is not enough to behave as a human. Uh, to make the characters believable, this character should also be able to generalize and reflect on past events. That's why another important ability of our agent is to reflect on observations, experiences and make some conclusions that later influence the agent's behavior. 
As written in the paper, these reflections are generated periodically a couple of times per day. For example, Maria Lopez was able to suggest a thoughtful birthday gift for Wolfgang Schulz after reflecting on his interest in mathematical music composition. How smart she is! In addition to the ability to remember and reflect, our villagers need to have a plan in place to ensure that their action makes sense over time and are consistent. But those plans are not set in stone. Agents may need to change their plans on the fly. At each time step, when they perceive the world around them, we prompt our language model using the observations to help the agent decide whether to continue with their existing plan or react to the new information. If the agent decides to react, the plan is regenerated starting from the time when the reaction occurred. For example, the agent might decide to stop and talk to another villager. Then a dialogue begins, where messages are based again on the summarized memory of that agent and the current dialogue history. And that proved to work quite nicely, and you can actually see a recorded demo, which shows the information for the 13th of February. You can find the link in the description. Personally, I still have questions. Do these agents have an ability to recall past experiences correctly and create believable plans, reactions and thoughts that shape their behavior? And what about how they collaborate as a community? Are they successful at sharing information, forming relationships and coordinating among themselves when they have a common goal? To answer these questions, the scientists evaluated the believability of agent behavior in two stages. First stage was a tightly controlled evaluation made by real human evaluators, who individually checked how each of the agents behaved in a specific situation to see if it seemed realistic. They did this by watching a replay of a randomly chosen agent's life in Smallville. Then these evaluators ranked the believability of the behavior of the agents and showed that if we include all the recommended attributes of the agent architecture, such as the ability to plan, reflect and observe, the believability of the agent's behavior was actually higher than that of human crowd workers. Did I get that right? I wonder if it means that the behavior of real human is less believable than the one of a generative agent? Then we all are doomed. You really should watch Westworld if you haven't done that yet. But the scientists went even further. They also evaluated the agent society as a whole, looking at information sharing, forming friendships and relationships, and coordination among the agents. To test whether the society succeeded in this criteria, they did the following. They added two particular pieces of information into the memories of two villagers, and then observed if that information spread to other agents over the two days. First seed was that Sam Moore wants to become the village mayor. And second seat is that Isabella Rodriguez organizes a party for Valentine's Day at the cafe she runs. I find the idea of the party to be quite a good one. That's where you really need a collaboration among agents and also a proactive behavior from Isabella's side. Isabella turned out to be quite proactive about the party. She made sure to mention the events to everyone she met, using different motivational techniques to invite different people. She also remembered to get everything needed for the party and 
the other agents, the villagers, had believable reactions to the invitations. And on the Valentine's Day, 5 out of 12 invited agents showed up at Hope's cafe to join the party. And this happened without the intervention of the real human, just by putting a seed of information into one of the agents. All in all, this is an impressive result. And researchers concluded that they managed to demonstrate a believable behavior of agents in a simulated artificial world. Admittedly, there were issues and limitations. For instance, agents sometimes had issues retrieving correct memories or just retrieve fragments of those memories. Agents also had a tendency to hallucinate, adding details that did not actually happen. If you watch the dialogues closely from time to time, they don't really make complete sense, though I guess when I talk to someone from time to time, I also don't make total sense, so I won't be that harsh on the agents. Uh, there were also some other limitations as well, for example, because agents had to remember so many different locations, they got confused when selecting the best place for lunch. They opted to go to a bar rather than cafe. Also, they assumed that a dorm bathroom could accommodate multiple people at once, which was not the case. What's more, the agent's behavior seemed to be overly polite and cooperative. Uh, and that's how I would say you can really spot a fake human. So this led to loss of individuality. Uh, you can notice it by looking at the conversation between, for example, the married couple Sam and Jennifer Moore. There are also plenty of other limitations I can think of. Humans tend to have many temptations and be extremely irrational. So we are not really keeping in memory uh, the conversations as they were uh, in the past. We remember how those things that happened to us made us feel. We also are full of emotions uh, rather than rational thinking. So imitating that will be quite tough for even AI. However, this is a great start and I truly enjoyed reading this paper and I'm looking forward to seeing where such research will bring us in the future. This was Olena. Let me know if such review was helpful. Thank you for watching this video.